In my last video of the big blower build, I showed how I made this impeller. And in this video, I will show how I made its new blower housing. And some parts of this video will make more sense if you've already watched the impeller video. So if you haven't already, I'll link it in the description or right here somewhere on the screen. One thing for example that I mentioned in the impeller video is that for all the complex shapes, I'll use the CNC, so that's what this build has to start with. I also had to use the CNC a little different to make the already existing round inside groove a hair deeper. I need to connect these parts in some way and it's very tempting to use some of this transparent stuff that I used on my small blower. And sure, that looks cool, but only once in the video. And after that, I'll probably never look at it again because it's in the corner and a blower is the most boring tool to watch. So instead, I rather make it strong because if something happens with the impeller, I want it to happen inside the blower housing and not causing any other damage. So therefore I picked up this 0.8 millimeter thick galvanized piece of steel. And I can already see it in the comments. Where did you get this piece of steel? I just went to my local, we have 0.8 millimeter thick pieces of galvanized steel store and picked one up. It's that easy. But for real, I just went to a tinsmith and they also cut it to size and that's it. There was a bunch of marking and center punching required to locate all the screw locations. And sometimes video editing becomes more fun if you experiment a little bit. To drill the holes, I had to set up my old drill press again. And I also removed all the burrs with the countersink. This wall also needs to go around this tight radius and to be able to do that I need to bend it to shape before I start screwing it on. I'll try to bend it around this copper pipe and the bend also has to be at the screw hole locations so that I can secure it there. That was actually pretty easy and the bend came out straight and fits oh, pretty good. The screw should then pull it tight. Before I'm starting drilling any holes, I finish the inside surfaces with polyurethane to make them smooth and moisture resistant. I'm also starting with the corner because this has to be in the right place. Now I can take the other end and pull it tight. And I just need to secure it with the screws and then it's done. It's pretty simple. I've attached it with just six screws yet, making sure that I would tension it around here. And now I can see where I need to cut it off. is pretty solid and I just have to repeat this one more time. Sweet. That is one sexy looking blower housing and it seems to be really strong, which is good. Next I need to secure the motor assembly to the blower housing and on my small dust collector blower I used knobs with these little pieces here. 
and this system works so well and I really like it. So I will use the exact same system for this one, but I'll use bigger screws and eight of them instead of six. These knobs will screw into threaded holes in the wood. I planned on using threaded inserts, but I did some tests and it was just impossible to get these into the birch plywood, so yeah. I've balanced the impeller as good as I possibly can by gluing in in total six counterweights. I did that with a shaft and a vise with some bearings on it. Then I spun it and let it settle at the heavy spots. Well, I recorded this after it's already been balanced, so there are no more heavy spots. It's already balanced, but you get the idea. And, well, now I can assemble it. God, this assembly is heavy. Alright, got it fully assembled, wired back up and clamped to the workbench. And I'm not going to use this switch to turn it on, I'm going to use the fuse in our electrical panel and I and the camera will stay outside of the shop. So, let's do it! <laughs> First test was successful, but as it was clamped to the table, no air got sucked up or blown out. So there was also no real load to the impeller. So now for the second test, I raised it off the table so that it can actually blow. Alright, it worked and nothing exploded, that's a huge plus. So now I can go on with the rest of the build. For the 90 degree transition I made these pieces here, which fit like so. And for these screws I will use some more of this sheet metal that I already bent to shape. This little one was really difficult. And this then fits on here. I've placed these screws so that they would use the already existing holes in the metal. To hang the dust collector from the wall, I previously had this piece here with threaded rods that screwed into this plate with T-nuts and then this whole thing could slide onto some angle brackets on the wall. And that worked really well so I'll reuse this concept. The upper edge needs to be 9 centimeters from the plate. And once I'm there, I lock the nuts together. And now a door stopper, a washer, and two more nuts. Here I have the new wall mounting brackets where the blower will sit on like so. And I mounted them with four M12 carriage bolts through the wall and also with plastic insert lock nuts. And if they are able to support me, they should hold a dust collector. On the old brackets, to reduce vibration, I had the blower sitting on this very dense foam, which is some kind of packing material. And that worked pretty good, so I will use that again. This stuff just cuts like no butter. The assembly is quite heavy now, but I can still lift it up there by myself.
In the blower housing I also again installed a wire screen over the inlet to prevent anything from getting inside it. And as I used the system with the knobs, it's also quite simple to mount the housing all by myself. Alright, now it's fully mounted and can still swing freely. And spacing to the wall also looks good. So now, let's fire it up. I also set up a pitot tube to get some measurements of the blower, first measuring the airspeed. For airflow I measured 145 mm head of water, and that's about 49 meters per second of airspeed, and with the size of my blower outlet that works out to about 2000 CFM or 930 liters per second of air. But I doubt that it's quite that much because as the air moves around this curvature, most of the air gets blown out in this area and that's where I measured and right here that doesn't blow as hard. So I don't think that it's quite 2000 CFM. And now measuring static suction. And for static suction I measure about 35 centimeters of water. Right now these values don't really mean that much to me, as I haven't learned how to work with them yet, but I thought it would be interesting for all the people who know this stuff. So, there you go. And in terms of nice performance, let's do a quick test. No, I was just kidding and not actually talking, but for real, the noise performance now is much better than before. Although it didn't really bother me here in the workshop because I wear ear protection for everything. But as I'm in the basement, above me, there my parents say it's much better than before. About as loud as the shop bag is. And that's it for this video. In the next one I will cover making the new filter box that will be roughly here. I won't use this one again because the filters are too small and not that good anymore. But yeah, more on that in the next video. And I have to take everything down again, just for the next build. Great. That is fairly tight. And this system worked really good. And that worked really well, so I'll reduce. And that, and that works. And that worked really good.